Title, CSDB Through the Years, 1874 to 1920. The CSDB logo, Excellence in Service, Colorado School for the Deaf and the Blind, established 1874. Aerial shot zooms in over the CSDB administration building as a person approaches the steps. The CSDB Museum, showcasing historical placards, pictures, and sports equipment. A young boy who is blind is seated in the museum exploring items. It's a slate and style. In the museum, an educator looks through a historical CSDB scrapbook with a young girl communicating in sign language. What is this? It's from a long time ago. A man communicates in sign language against a black background. Title, Walter Von Felt, class of 1968. In the early 1870s, Mr. Kennedy and his family left their home in Kansas and traveled west. Title, Jonathan Ralston Kennedy, Portrait of Kennedy. Graphic. A portion of the U.S. map, a red line travels across Kansas, ending in Colorado Springs. They arrived in Colorado and began to look around. Historical map of Colorado Springs, Colorado, with a portrait of a man with a long white beard, titled Jonathan Kennedy. After some searching, he decided that this was the place where he would set up his school. He went to the Colorado Territorial Legislature, and after some negotiation, they agreed to grant $5,000 to build his school, but only if Mr. Kennedy could find someone to donate the land. Mr. Kennedy returned home, and while searching for a donor, met General Palmer, who was happy to donate the land. Photograph of General William J. Palmer appears on the map. General Palmer's company donated 13 acres of land at the top of Kiowa Street Hill, where the campus stands today. That's how the Colorado Institute for the Education of Mutes was organized on April 8, 1874, before Colorado was a state. A man communicates in sign language against a black background, titled Quentin Weber, class of 2016. That day, seven deaf students began instruction with three teachers. Over the course of the year, six more students would join. A simple graphic representing the CSDB campus with a photo of a building, titled Old Main, wings added to support growth, 1876 to 1890. Building placement is shown on graphic. The first building was originally three stories of reddish sandstone with 12 rooms, coal stoves, and kerosene lamps. Soon they needed more room and wings were added. A student reading braille, title Quincy Maddock, class of 2019. Photograph, classroom with two educators, six students, title 1883, School for the Blind Established. In 1883, students with vision loss were admitted and the name was changed to the Colorado Institute for Educating Deaf, Mutes, and the Blind. Old fashioned script writing showing the school name change. And school began on the 12th of September, 1883. A female teacher and 10 students in a classroom. Superintendent Kennedy said he wanted blind children to have the same opportunities at the school as the students who were deaf. That year, three students who were blind enrolled. A photograph of 26 students and four adults on the steps of the building. He thought the school's mission was fulfilled when children who were deaf or blind received an education equal to students in public schools throughout the state. Old-fashioned script writing scrolling through names and dates. That year, Superintendent Kennedy became ill and retired. The school went through many superintendents, George Failer, Anna Whitcomb, and D.C. Dudley, before settling on John Ray. Quinton, photograph, students and staff in a field, title Paul Hubbard, class of 1889, and arrow points to Paul. Back in the 1880s, there was a deaf man, and his name was Paul Hubbard. Photograph, young man in a football uniform, man communicating in sign language in front of a black background, title Don Allsbaugh, class of 1979. He came to CSDB in 1883 as an eighth grader, and at that time there were no sports. But Paul was involved in other types of activities. After graduating from CSDB, Photograph, title, Gallaudet University football team, circa 1892, on the front steps of College Hall. Paul Hubbard is shown at far right in dark sweater. Paul went on to Gallaudet University. He played football there. Not only did he play football, but he played quarterback. Photograph, football team seated on field. Title, the invention of the huddle. During a football game, Paul looked around and noticed everyone was signing and it occurred to him that everybody on the other team could understand his method of communication. So he called all of his teammates in close so that the other team was unable to see what he was signing. And in that instance, he invented the football huddle. Two photographs, football teams in a huddle. And this huddle started becoming more and more popular. Another team started copying Paul's idea for this huddle. It became so popular that it was even adopted by teams in the National Football League. NFL logo, current photograph, Denver Broncos in a huddle. And Paul Hubbard is recognized as the inventor of the huddle. Photograph and video clip montage of actors portraying monsters and villains. Kennedy's grandson, a man named Lon Chaney, was a famous actor.
He was known as the Man of a Thousand Faces. Photograph, title, Lon Chaney, A Thousand Faces. Old-fashioned script writing, scrolling through names and dates. In 1893, the name changed again to the Colorado School for the Deaf and the Blind. The school transitioned superintendents in the next dozen years to D.C. Dudley again, and then on to Dr. William Argo. Rotating photographs of buildings. Building placement shown on simple campus graphic. Over an 11-year period, four buildings were added. 1889, the school building. 1892, Girls Hall, a residential building. 1893, the industrial building. And 1900, the Sloyd building. Title, Nikola Tesla, resided in Colorado Springs from 1899 to 1900. Photograph of Tesla. Nikola Tesla, one of the pioneers in electrical engineering, came to Colorado Springs and set up his lab very close to CSDB. He conducted several different experiments that were extremely interesting. Two photographs, a building with a tower and a tall antenna. Title, Tesla Experimental Station, located east of the CSDB campus. Some of the different experiments that he conducted include a cosmic radio array, Diagram, title, System of Transmission of Electrical Energy, and Tesla, patented March 20th, 1900. As Tesla's experiments with gargantuan lightning currents grew, he got to the point where he could have man-made lightning sent into the sky that could be seen or heard for miles around. Photograph, electrical currents being produced between a large metal ball and rod filling the station. Tesla seated in the background. Video clip, title, The Prestige, 2006, a man walking through electrical currents. CSDB used to have a dairy farm in which the students could go to work. Photograph of a one-level building, title, Milk House at Ranch, showing flytrap. Photograph of a man and over a dozen cattle in front of a barn, title, The Herd. During that time, shoes were typically made with nails that lined the soles of the shoe. The electrical currents would cause the students and the staff members to feel the sparks and crackles under their feet every time they took a step. Photograph, Tesla looking out of the lab. A sign on the door reads, Great Danger, Keep Out. Curiosity seekers would gather from all around and come to the lab where they could feel the electricity crackle underfoot. People also noted that the horses would rear back as they felt the electrical shocks going through their shoes. Photograph, electrical currents emanating from a large cylindrical chamber approximately 20 feet in height, Tesla standing in the foreground. During the course of the repeated experiments at Tesla Labs, there came a time when six miles away, an energy generator was short-circuited, causing a citywide outage. Movie clip, title, The Prestige, 2006. At night, a man looks out over city as all the lights go out. Tesla was under the impression that he was communicating with outer space. The students were enthralled and thrilled to see the different experiments that could possibly be communicating with Mars or other different planets. And all of this happening so close to CSDB. A simple graphic showing the Tesla Experimental Station and Dairy Farm to the east of the CSDB campus, 1899. Photograph zooms out from a man showing a large group filling a porch and staircase. Mr. George Veditz was widely known in the deaf community throughout the country. He began teaching at CSDB in 1888 and continued until he retired 17 years later. During his time at CSDB... Photograph of George. Three logos appear on screen. He founded the Gallaudet Alumni Association was the seventh president of the National Association of the Deaf from 1904 to 1910, and founded the Colorado Association of the Deaf in 1904. He had strong opinions about preserving sign language and solving injustices in job discrimination. Video clip, George communicating in sign language. He's well known for filming himself in preservation of the sign language. Photograph of couple, titled Bessie Veditz with her husband George Veditz, September 1934. George Veditz's wife, Bessie, took Ralph Wooten and Lottie Sullivan, both deafblind, photograph Ferris wheel and visitors at World's Fair, to the St. Louis World's Fair in 1904. At that time, people were fascinated to see how an educator could teach someone who was deafblind and how the students learn and communicate. CSDB received a gold medal award for this living exhibit. Photograph Bessie, Lottie, and Ralph. Bessie is signing in Lottie's hand. The living exhibits consisted of entire classes from different state institutions set up to look like real classrooms. Each class remained at the fair some weeks and 
allowed crowds of onlookers to see their daily lessons in a temporary schoolroom. Photograph, portrait, title Lottie Sullivan. Lottie Sullivan, a deaf-blind girl from the Colorado Institution, was awarded a special gold medal for her aptitude and progress. Symbol graphic of CSTB campus depicting building positions with rotating photographs of each. CSTB continued to add new structures. The administration building built in 1906 is the oldest remaining structure on the school campus. In 1907, the garage was added, and in 1910, the carriage house. Jones Hall, built in 1911, housed boys who were blind, and Palmer Hall, built in 1917, housed boys who were deaf. World War I began in 1914 and ended in 1918. Uncle Sam poster with text, I want you for U.S. Army. On November 11th, in the middle of the night, fireworks and bombs began bursting in the air, and the staff and students watching below were overjoyed because they knew it meant the war was over. Image of the Colorado Springs Gazette with armistice headlines. A parade was planned downtown. Dr. Argo, who was concerned about an epidemic of influenza, split screen, left, influenza flyer, right, bedridden patients, decided that they would have a parade on campus instead. Hundreds of soldiers and automobiles passed by while the students watched excitedly. Photograph, title, Victory Parade, Colorado Springs, November 11th, 1918. Men in uniform march down street holding American flags. A small boy leads with a drum. Afterwards, the CSDB students had their own parade. It was a day they would never forget. Photograph, young men in uniform with guns in front of the CSDB administration building. Camera panning away from the present day CSDB administration building. Title, CSDB through the years, 1874 to 1920. The CSDB logo, Excellence in Service, Colorado School for the Deaf and the Blind, established 1874. Historical storytellers, Donald Alsbach, class of 1979, Quincy Maddock, class of 2019, Walter Von Felt, class of 1968, Quentin Weber, class of 2016, Jim Olson, narrator, video production, Austin Belaish, class of 2006, Deb Branch, Sean Levier, Diane Covington, Derek Fisher, drone pilot. ASL Consultation, Dana Baldiviez, Relena McDevitt. Captioning, Lori Wilson. Audio Description, Jamie Cusimano. Jim Olson. Sign Language Interpretation, Joseph Bonjour. Corey McCormick. CSDB Historical Preservation Alumni and Volunteers. Catherine Alsbaugh, Class of 1977. Donald Alsbaugh, Class of 1979. Ralph Ariano, Class of 1978. Kevin Brown, Diane Covington. Tim Elstad, Class of 1978. Kathy Gonzalez, Debbie Haberkorn, Sue Pfaffenhauser, Jerry Schofield, Class of 1983, John Veen, Walter Von Felt, Class of 1968, Kim Weglin, Director of Outreach, Laura Douglas, Superintendent, Carol A. Hilty.